It's 1.30. I'd like to call the Monday, February 20th, 2017 meeting of the Traffic and Transportation Commission order. Roll call. Commissioner Clare. Present. Commissioner Littlefield. Here. Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Hale. Here, sir. Commissioner Shuline. Here. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner George. Here. And Commissioner Yonkel. Not here. We do have a quorum. Uh, can I have a motion concerning the approval of the minutes of the January 20th, 2017 meeting? Motion to approve. Motion to approve from Commissioner Hale. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shuline. Any discussion on the meeting minutes? Okay, we have a motion to approve the minutes of the January 20th, 2017 meeting from Commissioner Hale. Seconded by Commissioner Shuline. Votes, please. Item is approved. Report on license taxi and record service will be at April meeting. Uh, do I have uh, anybody? Well, let me talk about it. Do we have a motion concerning the consent docket? Two items on the consent. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve the consent docket from Commissioner Hale. Second. And we have a second by Commissioner Schuline. Anybody here to speak against? Uh, an item on the consent docket, 4A or 4B. Okay, do we have any talk on it? Okay, so we have a motion to approve the consent docket from Commissioner Hale, seconded by Commissioner Shuline. Can I have your votes, please? And item is approved. We go on now to item 5A. 5A is an application by Corey Lips, PE, Project Manager, uh, Cardinal Engineering, for time-limited parking, angle parking, parking stalls and setback areas, reserved parking for the physically disabled, metered parking, and commercial and passenger loading zones. Item 5A has 19 items for consideration. Is there anybody here who would like to speak on this item? Sir, if I could have your name, your address, you have up to five minutes, and when you're done, uh, please fill out one of those forms. Um, Corey Lips with Cardinal Engineering, 525 Central Park Drive, here to answer any questions that you may have on the application. Okay, if you could fill out one of the forms. Anybody else want to speak on the item? All right. So if I can have your name, address, and you have up to five minutes. Hi, Zach Martin, 204 North Robinson. I'm the owner developer on this project. Corey Lips has done a wonderful job in uh, preparing uh, things for us, and we're glad to answer any questions you all may have. All right, thank you. Thanks. Just fill out one of these forms, please. All right, thank you. Okay, anybody else to speak on item 5A? Okay, staff input. All right, you've got a myriad of staff comments before you. Uh, to put it as briefly as possible, what you're looking at is a substantial change to parking and well, primarily parking controls in the area that are kind of generally around the uh, 21C Museum Hotel. There's a new development that's being proposed north of, east of, and to the south of this building. Um, staff has included a few items because we've kind of partnered with the applicant on this. Um, what we've done is we've taken some of the requested parking changes, which is, which is essentially getting rid of metered parking on Main Street, and we've moved, we've extended the limits as requested by the applicant further to the east over to Lee Avenue, where is which is the western limit of the city's Project 180. And what this will do is, is this will continue the requested changes by the applicant all the way to where the city's metered parking runs out at Lee Avenue. So what we'll wind up with is a consistent uh, parking regulation pretty much uniformly applied. Um, they're introducing some angle parking on Fred Jones Avenue and likewise on Sheridan Avenue. Um, You'll notice that there's a little bit of an interesting parking control that it currently exists on both the north and, si north and south sides of Sheridan, which allows for people to park pretty much seven hours out of the day in, on that street already. So what they're proposing doesn't really, for the, for the most part, take that much capacity away from Sheridan. Uh, they're providing some additional maneuvering space behind the parking spaces on Sheridan. So um, the only recommendation we would have is, is if there's a motion for approval of the items, it would be per staff recommendations, which would be to uh, make sure that any uh, additional sidewalks that are provided next to the uh, angle parking are within either a roadway or a, some form of a public easement. And I'll be happy to answer any other questions you may have relative to this item. Okay, 
Thank you very much. Do we have a, uh, a, a motion concerning item 5A? Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the applicant's request with the staff's recommendations. That's with the good. staff recommendation concerning subpoint 12, 13, and 14. Okay, so we have a. Okay. That's a good question. Hold on one second. Sir, if, if we could just verify with you, staff recommended that they extended some of the parking and some of the things in your application to make that whole area the same. So that's one thing we want to make sure you kind of see that and, and that you're fine with all that. Uh, isn't that what you said that you, yeah, you guys right. added? That and the easement. Right. And then, and, and then the second is the easement concerns for 12, 13, and 14, sub points 12, 13, and 14. Are you okay with the staff's recommendation? Just read back what you were talking about where you, you added to the application something. Is that what I read and heard correctly? You added to make it a little bit longer down the road so the whole road was the same? Okay, and on page 11 of the staff report, um, primarily, this, is, this is primarily addressing the uh, angle parking that's proposed along the east side of Fred Jones Avenue. We've got, if approved, staff, staff recommends approval subject to the following, which is dedication of public right-of-way or roadway easement sufficient to cover the proposed parking spaces and the sidewalks adjacent to the parking area on Fred Jones Avenue. No objections. And no objections on that. Okay. And, and then everything else is fine the way that it's written? Correct. Okay. All right. So we do have a, a motion from Commissioner Shuline. to approve item 5A, all 19 subpoints, which is also per staff recommendations concerning subpoints 12, 13, and 14. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hale. Any talk on this item? Okay, we have a motion to approve item 5A, subpoints 1 through 19, which includes staff recommendations concerning subpoints 12, 13, and 14 from Commissioner Hale, from Commissioner Shuline, seconded by Commissioner Hale. Can I have your votes, please? Okay, item is approved. Thank you. All right. We go on now to item 5B, Gene Crabtree, PE, Olson Associates to establish 45 degree angle parking within a proposed on-street parking area on the north side of Northwest 16th Street from approximately 279 feet east to approximately 496 feet east of the east curb line of North Klein Avenue, sub point two, establish one reserved parking space for the physically disabled on the north side of Northwest 16th Street from approximately 459 feet east to approximately 496 feet east of the east curb line of, nor of North Klein Avenue and three, close the southbound right turn lane on North Clawson Boulevard between Northwest 16th Street and Northwest 17th Street. Sir, if I can have your name, your address, and you have up to five minutes, and please fill out a form when you're done. Sure. Uh, my name is Ben Sellers, owner developer of this site, uh, 16th and Clawson. Um, uh, briefly, I wanted to describe our project. Uh, we'll, we'll be building a 48-unit apartment complex on the site with um, 3,500 square feet uh, of retail space on the ground floor. Um, part of this development is uh, being mixed use and uh, adding to the walkability and the sa sa pedestrian safety of the area. Um, the proposed angle parking on 16th Street, um, one thing that's important is to allow vehicles to back out safely. Um, and with the 45 degree angle, there's a little over two feet, uh, if I'm correct, additional behind that would allow large vehicles, large pickup trucks to back out and not have to encroach into eastbound 16th Street traffic. Uh, we agree with all the, all the staff's comments on that, um, as well as the, um, the handicapped parking space there. Uh, also part of the proposal is eliminating uh, the southbound fourth lane on Classen that turns uh, westbound onto 16th Street. Um, this, this lane starts at 17th Street and goes south to 16th Street. And really the, the, the main reason for this is to, is again, part of pedestrian safety and to get across Classen. 
Uh, I myself live uh, in Vesta Park uh, across, and to get from the neighborhood across Classen, there's, there's five leaf probs. There's an island between Western, there's a peninsula in the middle of Classen, and then the other island between the swoop lane, and then you finally get to the other side of the street. And so by eliminating this fourth uh, swoop lane, um, we take out one of those, one of those crossings to make it a little bit more safer and also provide a little bit more buffer between the street and the building. Uh, we agree with staff's comments on this. Uh, we also analyzed the actual radius of that turn, and while we had hoped that it could be a little bit of a smaller radius, um, our engineers went back and did the, did the math, and a 40-foot radius turn um, is really what's needed uh, for a large truck or a bus to make that right turn because of the angle of class, and so we agree with that. Um, we also don't want large vehicles driving up on the sidewalk or over any potential landscaping, so we're good there. Um, one of the comments um, is this image right here, which um, one, the, the only concern that I believe staff had come up with was the potential ponding of water flowing southbound and collecting there at the new curb and gutter we're proposing. Uh, our engineers uh, figured out a way to repave that driveway. That driveway in the middle of the block actually turns into Brahms parking lot. And by uh, repaving and regrading that, I believe we've, we've solved those potential ponding and drainage issues. Um, what we did want to be clear about on our request is that um, we really would like to uh, eliminate the lane from the driveway north of 17th with paint. Uh, that's actually in front of property we do not own. Um, Brahms owns that property. Uh, Brahms is planning a redevelopment of that site, and we're not sure what their exact timing of that is, but I understand it's imminent. Um, um, don't believe that uh, closing that with paint versus concrete would provo provide or cause any additional safety concerns with traffic, and also, uh, quite frankly, it's a significant additional expense on our to, to, to pave and concrete that north of the driveway. So, I uh, just want to clarify that part of our request is to uh, do that with paint north of the driveway to 17th Street. So, I'm available for questions and. All right, thank you very much. Anybody else want to speak on this item? 5B. Okay, staff input, please. All right, you've got our comments before you. Um, items 1 and 2 deal with a request to establish some angle parking on the north side of uh, 16th Street. Um, originally, when this, when this plan was submitted to us, it was uh, for 60-degree angle parking, but we've worked with the applicant, and they've made a revision to it. They've since converted it to 45, and they provided some additional maneuvering room back behind the spaces. Uh, when you consider the fact that uh, 16th Street carries just under 8,000 cars a day, and it's, it's the same width as the uh, most commonly found residential street in the city, it makes sense to have that, that additional buffer space for maneuvering. Um, they've made those changes. They've, they've included one uh, accessible space for use by the, uh, to be reserved for use by the uh, physically disabled. That would be in accordance with the uh, city's standard practice and in accordance with general guidelines to meet ADA accessible requirements. Um, when it comes to the item of the right turn lane, ordinarily this is something that the Commission wouldn't ordinarily consider, but it was referred to the Commission for hearing um, through the Planning Commission. And so what you're looking at is a removal of this particular lane is the only one of its type that's on Class and Boulevard. It's the only place where we've got uh, one block of a dedicated right turn lane. Um, the one thing to consider, though, is uh, as, this, as Class and approaches, Northwest 16th Street southbound, it does take that right turn is about a 120 degree turn to the right as opposed to a more traditional 90 degree turn. And that does require a little bit more maneuvering room. Um, when we had commented on this, one thing, you know, the, ap the applicants has indicated that, you know, they've addressed how they might prevent ponding from occurring along class and by moving the, um, when they move the, the curb line adjacent to their property further into the road. From a drainage perspective, it probably works out all right. The, our biggest concern is that drivers have become very accustomed to using that lane, and you're probably going to wind up trapping people that are be in it, and then next thing you know, they'll be in a position where they need to be out of it if they're, if they're not aware of it. So that was our contention was that it would probably be best to, for the full removal of the lane as opposed to just a partial removal because, you know, with other people's development plans, not knowing what they are or are not, it's hard to know whether, you know, retaining a portion of a turn, if, of a turn lane that's been there for a long time would be necessarily the right thing to do. So anyhow, you've got the rest of our comments before you. Um, if recommended for approval, at least for parts one and two, 
uh, as noted in the previous application, that we'd recommend approval subject to dedication of public right-of-way or roadway easement sufficient to cover the proposed parking areas and the sidewalks adjacent to the parking area along Northwest 16th Street. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have at this time. And sir, if I could just verify that you're okay with that staff recommendation on sub points one and two? Yes, we are. All right, thank you very much. Okay, can I have a motion concerning item 5B, please? Chairman, I move we approve the applicant's request as submitted with, uh, with uh, related to parts one and two, the dedication of public right-of-way or roadway easement sufficient to cover the proposed parking spaces and the sidewalks adjacent to the parking. Okay. We have, we have a, a motion from uh, Commissioner Schuline to approve item 5B with staff recommendations for sub points one and two. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Commissioner Littlefield. Any discussion on this item? Uh, I just think that, well, the first part is if we approve number three, who, is that all part of your work for that area and you'll do all that work? That's all part of your cost? Okay. Okay, any other to, to item uh, to talk on 5B? Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Schuline to approve item 5B per staff recommendations for sub points one and two and seconded by Commissioner Littlefield. Can I have your votes, please? All right, item is approved. All right, good luck, sir. 5C, Jeff Berry, Sec Security Di Director, Crossings Community Church, consider a request for the installation of a traffic signal at the intersection of uh, Columbia Drive and Northwest 115th Street. Anybody here to speak on that one? Staff input? Okay, uh, prior to the meeting, uh, Mr. Barry called me and indicated that he was not going to be able to attend this particular meeting and has asked for this item to be continued to the March 20th meeting. Okay, thank you. Do we have a motion concerning 5C? Maybe we continue it to the 20th. Okay, March. We, we have a motion from Commissioner George to uh, move 5C to the March 20th meeting. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Miller. Any discussion? Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner George to move item 5C to the March 20th meeting, seconded by Commissioner Miller. Can I have your votes, please? Okay, item is approved to be pushed. Uh, 5D, Christopher Anderson, PE, SMC Consultant Engineers, PC, to consider request two, sub point one. Change the speed limit on Northwest 164th Street between North Rockwell Avenue and North MacArthur Boulevard from 45 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour and or, sub point two, install an intersection conflict warning signal system at a proposed private street, Brookfield Drive, and on eastbound Northwest 164th Street, approximately 670 feet west of the Brook, uh, Brookfield Drive. Anybody here to speak on this item? So if I can have your name, address, you have up to five minutes and please fill out a form when you're done. Christopher Anderson with the SMC Consulting Engineers, 815 West Main. Uh, this request was submitted at the, actually at the recommendation of the city traffic engineer in conjunction with the final plat that we had on the planning commission a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I'll be happy to give any input that I can. I'm sure uh, Mr. Chai has a pretty good presentation for this. All right, thank you, sir. Anybody else to speak on this item? Okay, staff input, please. All right, you've got our comments before you. Um, in preparing this item, we did kind of an extensive restudy of the speeds that were, of the prevailing speeds along 164th Street, because a few, um, back in 2014, we had a request where we had to, uh, where we had another new development proposed, and what we had done is we'd done a comprehensive review of 164th Street, and at that time, we established a consistent speed limit of 45 on this particular arterial corridor from Mustang Road all the way to Penn. Um, what Mr. Anderson's got is he, he's got a development that's being, being proposed that's a little bit west of MacArthur. It's at a location where it will not pass our site distance requirement based on the 45 mile an hour speed limit. There's, this is a piece of land that um, that was uh, parceled out from another, from another, an adjacent tract, and the only portion of the, of that original tract that would pass decision site distance remains with the with the portion that was not that was not sold off for this particular development. 
So what, we're, what we wind up with is a situation where we've got uh, looking to the east from the proposed street that they've got called Brookfield, Dr Brookfield Drive, they will meet sight distance looking to the east, but looking to the west, they've, uh, they come up short based on our requirements for, a, uh, for the po posted 45 mile an hour speed limit. Um, since between the time of their first final plat application and their current application, they have moved their driveway further to the east in order to gain as much sight distance as they can, staying within the confines of their property. But they're at a location where they just cannot make our sight distance requirements. Uh, lowering the speed limit would be probably ineffective in this particular area. Like I said, our, our, the current prevailing speed limit, even though we've got it posted at 45, is running 49 miles an hour. And on the adjacent sections of 164th Street, it's pretty much echoing the same thing. So as we were trying to look at this further to try and find some means to address the uh, short sight distance looking to the west from this new proposed street, um, you know, there, there are probably several options that could have been taken. Because one thing you have to consider is that the north side of 164th Street is outside Oklahoma City's corporate limits. It's actually, this is a roadway which is shared between the city and Oklahoma County. So any speed limit change that would be done or considered would also be, would be subsequently heard by the county because they would have to partner in this. Um, one thing that we did find when we started looking at this more was, um, which is what we've included as for consideration, is something called an in intersection conflict warning signal. And what this does is it's an interactive thing as opposed to using a static warning signal that will, uh, that will advise uh, eastbound drivers on 164th Street and drivers coming out on the proposed Brookfield Drive if in the event that there's an approaching vehicle that they can't see. Because what we've got is there's a, there's a localized hilltop that's on 164th Street towards the west end of this property. And so what this does is it, it will detect vehicles. So a vehicle detected on Brookfield Drive will cause a, a warning flasher to start for people approaching on 164th Street, giving them time to recognize that there's something that they cannot see that's about to, you know, that's about to enter the roadway ahead of them. And likewise, it would, it would uh, for a vehicle that's detected on 164th Street where it can't be seen by someone pulling out of, on Brookfield Drive, it would start a warning signal to indicate to them that there's someone approaching on 164th. So I think a use of a system like this would probably, is probably one of the best means I think we can think of to use to address the site distance deficiency. Because there's you know, a static warning sy signal. We've got warning flashers you know, scattered throughout the city but they have a tendency to blend into the background over time. I mean, they're, they, because they don't impart any new information. This is something that's kind of an interactive system and, the, and it will only be activated when something's detected. And that's the reason why we're recommending it to you. And so if, if you know, and if recommended for approval, something like this would be, uh, we're recommending should be constructed as for, along with first phase of development by the developer since it is a, a safety, basically a safety signaling system. Um, this is also a time when we're looking at, um, I guess, the city's now collecting uh, development impact fees, but when we review the ordinance for that, those collection of use of fees like that are for capacity related improvements. And since this is strictly a, you know, a site distance safety improvement, it's not really eligible for, for the use of uh, collected impact fees to pay for something like this. So I will be happy to answer any questions that you might have relative to this. Okay. So if you could come up to the mic. Let me just ask you a few things. Out of the two options, which ones do you prefer, first of all? Well, we prefer to have the speed limit lowered. Okay, and if we did went with number, go with number two, would you be willing to pay for it? I will have to review that. Uh, that's something new that I haven't heard about. You know, originally, we were talking about the static type signal that we see, uh, but this sounds like this is something different, uh, so I don't know what the cost on that is, so I can't say yes, we would absolutely do that. Okay, and so the, then the third question is, does something have to be done today, meaning is this intersection unsafe and something has to be done? Is that to, for, the, for you to press on with, with, the, with the work, I well, guess? Well, currently what, the, what, they've, what we've got is a situation where this, that based on the posted speed limit, this, this particular intersection, the proposed intersection won't meet decision site distance. And that's kind of a primary safety concern for us. Um, 
you know, you can always look at posting a, a lower speed limit. The only downside to the posting the lower speed limit is, you know, we've already got it currently posted at 45, and we've got an 85th percentile running just a mile under 50 miles an hour. So, you know, in that, in that particular case, this particular location would, you know, at, at 45 miles an hour, we've got, what, 690 feet required for decision site distance. When you bump that up to the 50, mile, 50 miles an hour, which is more in line with, like, the 85th percentile, then our site distance requirements jumps up to uh, 750 feet, so it becomes kind of a more tenuous situation. And so it's for that reason that we're re recommending the use of a warning, an interactive warning flasher. So, no, I'm just saying. So, so if we prove none of this, does he proceed on with his work and build a road? Uh, but I believe that this item was continued by at the planning commission because they were wanting to a decision from the Traffic Commission, okay. a hearing on this item before they consider it. And I think this comes up for the, its next hearing at the Planning Commission coming Thursday. It's Thursday. Yes. Okay. It's Thursday. Got it. All right. So, of course, you want us to do something by this Thursday. Okay. All right. No worries. Okay. I was just trying to clarify in my mind the two different things before I asked for a, a motion on it, so I at least knew what I was asking. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. So we have uh, item 5D, subparts 1 and or subparts 2. Can I have a motion con concerning this, please? Motion to deny. Okay. We have a motion to disapprove item 5D from Commissioner Hale. Disapprove. Hey, do we have a second on that motion? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Miller. Okay. Who'd like to go? So is this your motion? You get to go, sir. Question. Stuart, if I understand when this originally was designed, that the, that the location of the street was further to the west, but due to site different uh, problems, it had to be moved further to the east? That's correct. And they've moved to this within the confines of the property that they have control over. They've shifted their driveways or their, their new proposed street as far to the east on the site as they can move it. Okay. With this sign detection device, could they go back to the original plan? Probably so. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I had a question sure. about the conflict warning system. Is it sensitive enough to pick up motorcycles? Because I, I've seen a lot of motorcycle accidents in the city in the last few months. I just wonder how sensitive is it? It would the only the in order to detect a vehicle, it'd have to use an inductive loop, and our inductive loop systems are are sensitive enough to pick up things like motorcycles. It may it may it may be hit and miss with a bicycle, but a bicycle doesn't have the won't be traveling near the speed where it ever presents itself as an, as a problem. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, the only option to this, and he apparently he does not understand, he's not aware of the intersection warning signal system, right? Or has it been? Well, the, um, every everyone on the commission and the applicant received our uh, our advisory email when we sent it out right after publication. Okay. But this he's be, not. Aware, but okay. The only other option for a situation that does not meet our decision site distance criteria would be to install an advanced warning sign with an advisory speed plate that would recommend the traffic be reduced to that speed through that area. Now that's the system that we've got numerous locations around the city that, uh, that Stuart's made reference to that kind of tend to blend in over time. So that was the reason for this. This is an improved traffic control system for that situation. And I don't think anyone was opposed to it, but we need to make sure that what's been a <clears throat> proposed here is that you install this. And are you agreeing to do that? No, sir, at this time I am not. So we have no other option then. Are you agreeing to put in an advanced warning system <clears throat> at this location to meet the decision site distance criteria? No, sir. I stand by my motion. 
Okay. Anybody else have any comments on this item? But just so I'm clear on the two, the two lighted. One is the, one, the yellow light that just hangs above the intersection. Is that that's the one that's just always blinking, or it would be an advance warning sign. The uh, the the one that uh, Commissioner uh -huh. Miller was talking yeah. about would typically be like it would have like a T intersection. It'd be a yellow diamond sign. It would have a T sh intersection shape on it. Probably a, 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 a yellow warning flash above it, which would work continuously, and then it would have like a supplemental advisory speed plaque underneath it, indicating like a desired speed. In this case, it would probably, probably read like 40, oh, okay. 40 miles per hour. So it's just a, a it pole. Be, uh, it's, not a, it's not hanging over the intersection. It's right. That's one right. sign one all by coming from the, from the east going, I mean, from the west going east, just Correct. that one spot. Right. Like at the top of the hill or up, coming up the hill. Gotcha. The other one is a complicated device that has a light on the coming out of the yeah out of the subdivision that a light will flash for them that watch out there's somebody coming. Actually, it would be both because you'd have because as you're approaching eastbound on 164th Street, if someone pulled up on on the new proposed street, it would cause the light that was for eastbound traffic to start flashing, which would indicate that they've got you know a, a, a vehicle on the side street, which is which they may now encounter. Right. Gotcha. And likewise, for people that are pulling out on this new proposed street, because you can't clearly see that, you know, sufficiently far enough looking west to know whether or not you've got a road hazard, mm -hmm. you know, an approaching vehicle, right. it would start flashing. So it would give them advance warning that there's something approaching that they cannot see, that right. they need to be aware of. Right. So you put the, the sensors in the ground just in that lane. Correct. It's not a, a, it's not a sensor going across the road. Kind of thing. It just it'd be like at a right. Yeah, it, it would be, it'd be, it'd be like an inductive loop. One on a, one in the eastbound lane of 164th Street, and one on this at the intersection of this private street. Oh, okay. And then you just run run the wire in kind of or thing, and it all kind of probably communicate wirelessly. Wirelessly. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Is the applicant interested in taking some time to research the cost associated with this? I mean, what I'm asking is to put this off till you can come back with a clear idea of I think at this time we probably need to go ahead and have the vote we are going forward at the Planning Commission uh, on Thursday one way or the other this okay. I'll, I'll just add this this is a, a small subdivision it's under 30 lots so the cost of putting in inductive loops and that kind of thing that's that's beyond the, the cost of this yeah. it makes it Prohibitive, and and also, do you see our point kind of that going down to 40 mile an hour just because we tell them to? People are going to drive how the road looks, and just because we tell them to go down to 40 doesn't mean that they'll do 40. When when the 85 percentile is now 49. Uh, I hear what you're saying. Okay, I just want to make it clear why going down to 40 probably isn't the the best option that the actual public would would do. Okay, all right. Any other discussion on item 5D? I just want to, oh yes sir, ask for one clarification. So we have the, the intersection conflict device, but then we also have what what you mentioned earlier was just the, not the notifications, kind of the standard flasher. Is that an option here? An intersection warning flasher. I mean, we we've, we've got them around town, and we've got we've got lots of warning devices that will indicate that you know that would advise drivers that a you know a slower speed is recommended. But I would probably get, venture guess that compliance at most of those is probably not not really achieved. I mean, just to, because we'd seen something recently in the same area when we were reviewing this, Oklahoma County's got an intersection at Meridian Northwest 178th Street, and they have got on. Um, on 178, they've they've got a series of signs reducing the speed limit from 55 miles an hour, stepping it down to 45, and then getting to 35, where traffic crosses Meridian Avenue. And because we, because this happened to be in the same area, and probably the, you know, the same, you know, drivers were accustomed kind of the same things. Um, we went ahead and just conducted a uh, a speed study there to see what kind of compliance rate the county was achieving, and based on the posted. Uh, 35 mile an hour speed limit, the, the county is achieving a 6% compliance rate. 
Even though it's posted 35, the, uh, more than half of the drivers are still traveling 46 or above. The 85th percentile speed, where it's posted 35, is actually running at 53. And during our study, we, we captured a high speed of 63 miles an hour. And this is posted 35, regulatory 35, not a, not a warning 35. And so for that reason, I, don't, I do not have reason to suspect that posting a, a static advisory sign with a supplemental speed plate you know, which is, like I said, a warning and advisory in nature would achieve much in the way of any sort of a, a change in traffic speeds. And our primary goal here is we just want the, we just need it to be safe. What they've got is they've got, they've got a piece of property where they've got a hill that clearly blocks the view of, of approaching traffic. And drivers are running, you know, just better than 45 miles an hour. And our whole goal is when this goes in, is to provide as safe an access for not only the residents in this new addition, but you know those drivers that are going to be approaching on 164th Street. Safety is our primary is really our only concern at this particular location. Had this had this drive this street location met site distance requirements, this wouldn't even be talked about today. But they're in a position where they can't be, just because of the lay of the land, they can't meet site distance requirements. And I don't think that re, that there's a realistic hope that posting a lower speed limit will have any meaningful change on driver attitudes with respect to speed? But to answer your question, yes. We could go with just a regular warning. And so we'll then my question to the applicant is, would you be, are you against a more conventional intersection notification method? We would certainly be willing to consider that uh, depending upon the Planning Commission meeting. And that would also be part of, be cost to the applicant, correct? If so, to, uh, Yeah, something like that would have to be borne by the applicant. I also. mean, this, this is a situation that's, I mean, that's kind of unique and it's being driven by the location of a proposed road. Okay. Yes, sir. We've, we've talked for years on this horseshoe about traffic problems that need to be solved after developments happen. And what I really appreciate happening here today is that the Planning Commission has reviewed an application and they have recognized that there could be a serious public safety issue with this application and they have brought it before us to, to address it now before the development happens. And I'd like to take that seriously. I watched the YouTube video that staff sent as an educational element on this device, and it's pretty, pretty remarkable. It's it's a, it's a it's a device and a technology that could save lives, as opposed to just trying to figure out a means in order to have a development move forward that appeases the planning commission in a, a half successful way. What what would be what would be uh, wrong with that notion of continuing this for 30 days, continuing your hearing at the Planning Commission, watching this YouTube video, learning a little bit more about it, and taking this application and the traffic consequences a bit more seriously? Is there something about the hearing at the Planning Commission that's absolutely urgent, or could, for the, for the purposes of public safety, could this wait another 30 days? This item was originally supposed to be on Planning Commission back in December, and it's been continued twice. The first staff report we got asked us to move the drive over as far as we could. This was the original, this was the original layout. We agreed to we move the drive over as far as we could to be safe for our property. We met with city staff, with Mr. Chai, with Blaine Sheffield, and with Debbie Miller, uh, the day before the Planning Commission, maybe in the day of the Planning Commission, and we agreed to do that and thought we were going forward that afternoon with moving that over and that would be approved. Then they came back and asked us to continue it, and at the next staff report we got, it asked us to submit the application to lower the speed limit. So it's changing. It keeps changing, and we're ready to go forward with this. We felt like we've done what we need to do, but we did what was asked. We agreed, and we're ready to go forward. Babe. 
I've lived in a neighborhood for 10 years that, that experienced vast development around it and over the course of a decade. And looking at, looking at these applications here and at the Planning Commission, sometimes you can't look at them often enough to get it where it's the right thing. Um, two, or three, two or three continuances on an item to make sure that we're doing the right thing for public safety, for development, for the city, et cetera, it's, it's a good thing. It's not, in my opinion, a bad thing. One more continuance to get this right might be the smart thing to do as opposed to, I don't know what would happen if this were denied today and what would happen at the Planning Commission hearing upcoming. Well, uh, let me just ask, uh, if we were to approve item 2, 5D2, and the applicant decided not to pay, well, then it wouldn't get done and it would act as if it would be a disapproval, per se. And, but yet, if you decided to do something like this and then go to plan in and you decide to go ahead and proceed on, then you could proceed on, if you see where I'm going. Uh, just to try to find some options here to move like you want to move, but yet be concerned on, on our side. Uh, w would I be right, staff, that if, if we were to approve item two, sub-item two, and then in the future, after the planning meeting, after whatever, the applicant decides, no, I'm not going to put that in, then it would be as if we just approved nothing and, and they, they, they couldn't proceed on with their project. Well, an action taken by the commission is always subject to appeal. An appeal is always subject to being heard by the city council. So if, it was, if the commission opted to, to, come, to uh, go with one of the items as recommended by staff for your consideration, um, you know, this item, this item is still going to be heard by the Planning Commission on Thursday, but the but applicant always has the right to appeal any decisions made by this commission. I've got 10 days from the, from the date of this hearing to file an appeal to be heard by the City Council. All right, just wanted to throw that last part out there. All right, so any other talk? Okay, we, we have a motion from Commissioner Hale to disapprove item 5D, both subpoints, seconded by Commissioner Miller. Can I have your votes, please? Okay, item is disapproved. Okay. Sir. Okay, we can go now for uh, item six, comments from citizens. Anybody out there want to talk to us? Come on up, sir. If, uh, <laughs> if we could have your name, your address, you have up to five minutes, and then fill out one of those forms when you're done, please, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Mark DiMercurio. I'm at uh, 8301 Northwest 159th Street, <coughs> excuse me, Edmond, Oklahoma. Um, I first want to thank you for the work you all are putting in here. Obviously, you're taking safety concerns serious, and I appreciate that. We want uh, myself and, and other uh, neighbors that have joined me here, want to thank you for considering our, uh, our application. Essentially, what we're asking for amount, amounts to us. Oh, oh, sir, hold on one second. Sir. Hold on one second. Yep. This was open just for uh, comments from citizens. Are you talking about a certain item? Oh, I, yes, yes, I'm yeah. talking about... The, our application for stop signs. Right, which was item uh, 4B, okay, right, so right, right. which was no, which was on the uh, consent docket, and we, we approved the uh, consent docket. Sorry, at the, yes, sir. That was at about 1.31. Okay. <laughs> I want to thank you for your approval. Uh, <laughs> all right. Do we still need a form because he did talk? Yes, yeah, sir. If you just fill out your, your – just because you did say your name, so we got to get it down. No, that's okay. All right, so any other citizens want to talk? Sir? No, nothing? Okay. All right, then we got reports and other items from the traffic commissioners. Let's start over there with number one, Mr. Clare. Nothing to report. Clare. How about Commissioner Lowfield? I really don't. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. No? All right. Then we go on to Commissioner Hale. Nothing to report, sir. Commissioner Shuline. I don't want to break the trend here, but. But, everybody, hold on. That, that, uh, the staff was evaluating our traffic calming policy and prepared to, to bring something for, to us soon. But I did see that you were limiting. Oh, oh, sorry. But I did read that you were only looking at the Tulsa plan, which is I read. I, could, I looked at Ford online today, and they've removed it or something. It had been, the links were broken. 
And as I recall, the Tulsa plan only included speed bumps. That's all it had before. So I'm not going to be very happy if that's what our plan comes. <laughs> and but I, will, I will say I'm anxious okay. to see what you have, and we'll certainly, I'm happy to consider it. Well, at this point in time, what we're, because, because, as opposed to bringing a, a full-blown plan with, with a, a bunch of different varieties of items, our intent is to, is to get basically the front piece done, any sort of a hearing process worked out, and then present at least the first tool in the toolkit. And then from there, others can be added to it. This really establishes more form and format. Because there are, there's a lot to this, and once, once, we've, once we've arrived at the standard format for presenting these items, then you can start looking at adding tools to your kit. All right, so, so what we'll get is a, is a shell. This is how traffic common will look. And then they'll bring the first piece in. Is that what you're saying? And then right. once that gets going, then we'll start talking about street, street scraping. Right. If, if needed. Street scaping and all this other stuff. Right. That yeah, because the do. one thing that we found in, in a lot of our research is this seems to be like the standard left. I mean, the, the other things like uh, curb bump outs, chicanes, and other, other such things have been dropped across the nation. They are not being used. They've, they've been tried. They've been unsuccessful with them, and so consequently, this, is, this seems to be like the most commonly recurring theme that seems to still be surviving in toolkits. So we were figure we're going to start with, we'll start with the most commonly used tool first, and then we can work from there. I, I, I'm happy to look at the plan. I, I dis respectfully disagree that there are more things that could be included besides just speed moves. I think driver feedback devices are mm -hmm. traffic calming. I think that the pedestrian, uh, the, the paddle boards that are in the middle of Broadway, those are, are also traffic calming devices that can be easily included in our plan. But that all being said, one, one last comment I do want to include is that I did run into the planning uh, chairman, the planning commission chairman, over the weekend at an event, and he. He expressed to me their, their interest, too. They're, they're genuinely interested in the traffic calming plan. But I'd also like to get feedback from, they have traffic planners, which I don't quite understand. I don't want to throw a monkey wrench into things, because I know that we have, there's separations of responsibility between public works and traffic and, and planning. But I really think I'd like to get some input from them at some point and early on in the process, honestly. I think it would make perfect sense that we could probably expedite the approval of this thing if we had support from planning early. And so I do want to encourage that if we can. If there's an opportunity, I really think that's important. Okay, because I know planning staff is looking at making changes within the uh, subdivision regulations to incorporate things like this, and that's been their primary focus. But as far as, you know, retrofits for existing roadways, that's kind of outside the scope of anything that they do. I hear what you're saying. I, I understand about the retrofits, but I think there are other things besides just retrofits that I hope we will include. But, but we'll look at what we come up with first. All right, over to Commissioner Miller. Uh, nothing to report, sir. And Commissioner George. All right. Councilor. Oh, what, we have a second? No, I have a question. All right. A comment. Yeah. Did, did you, ref, uh, are you referring to something that you read or saw? Well, I'm not, I'm not privy to or aware of anything that's been I mean, shared. Well, it, um, Mr. Shuline's commenting on, um, because right now the most recent, the, the best information, the most current information we found is actually based on the city of Tulsa's policy. And we're kind of using that as a model for how we're going to present this one. But as far as uh, sharing links or anything like that to the city of Tulsa's policy, we haven't sent anything out to members of the commission. I'm thinking he's just making a reference to the fact that he had seen that doing his own independent research prior to. I thought I read, I thought I read something too that said that, that it's getting really close. Maybe it was in the minutes from your comments last time. Yeah, I made I made no comments about the Tulsa traffic planning. No, no, no. Just the fact that planning that that they were that staff was getting ready. Staff yeah, was I almost we, ready. That's right. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that's where it was. We'd send out an update, well, and we're just letting you know that we were kind of looking at the Tulsa plan, kind of as a model. I have not that received that. I have not received any correspondence of, of staff looking at any plan as any model. The reports that I've been making for the past three or four, or four months or so have been that we're awaiting okay. a plan to be presented to the committee for our review and offering um, uh, Commissioner Schuline and my time to sit and meet, discuss, share, anything if necessary. 
Right. We, it's been kind of a uh, just to sit and wait, I think, uh, environment for the past three or four months. And, and so I would like very much like to be brought up to speed. In fact, I think it would be great maybe to sit down and have a meeting, as Commissioner Shuline suggests, bring in a couple of folks sure. from, from the planning department. Well, I, what I I remember seeing something just over the weekend that I read that said there that the staff is getting really close to present something to us, and that's basically which all is I'm great, saying. Yeah. which is great. And anything that anything that would come, there's always the opportunity for discussion and amend and add, take away, you know, whatever I think would be being presented wouldn't by any means be a final no. thing by any means. So I'm not upset. But, I, but I'm not aware of, of what you had commented on. Okay. All right. From staff. We'll look. Thank we'll you. look. Great. Thank you. All right. Ooh. Counselor, you got anything? No. Okay. I'd just like to update people. Uh, I, I did send to the Oklahoman a, a, a small note to them to clarify taxis and, and all that, but I have not heard back from those two different groups that say it. So uh, maybe staff can help out, and, 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 I'll, and I'll just get with you. Maybe we can send an official letter to them or something. There's, there's two organizations that were referenced in the, editor, in, the, uh, editor, in the comments in the paper. I tried to get hold of the two authors of, that, of those reports that give us a C because we limit taxis and all that. Uh, they never answered me back. So maybe we can send them just a letter saying, hey, you know, make it more official response to them to say fix your database because it looks bad on us when we actually do try real hard and work with our vehicle for hire people. Okay, uh, staff, do you have anything? No, just the uh, our, our end of the month update on the signs on yield controls and parking controls in residential areas that we've handled administratively. That's all we've got additional to add. Okay. And I checked with council, and we do not have to vote on an adjournment because once you leave, there's no more quorum. So, anybody got any more business? What if we just stay?